their friends in Christ. Happy Sunday and welcome to the 33rd Sunday in the Ordinary Time, Yes, The liturgy today invites us to reflect on the end of the world. Cosmic events present us with a great example. Accidents, the deaths of loved ones, and natural disasters claiming lives could get us to reflect, if only for a while, about the fact that it could have been anyone. Many homes and businesses, including lives, get shattered, and it takes time to rebuild. If it does happen to me or to you, what next? Today's gospel is taken from Luke chapter 21, verses 5 to 19. It has been traditional to reflect on an end of the world gospel passage as we approach the end of the liturgical year. We will also be offered a similar gospel passage on the first Sunday of Advent. It is important to note this because from a biblical perspective, the end of this world is not such a tragic event since it also announces the beginning of a new one. We should note that in today's gospel, the end of the world is presented on various levels. The immediate end is a chaotic and painful experience that came when the Romans destroyed the Jewish temple in 78. For Christians at least, this represented the end of the Old Testament era with its cultic temple rites. Secondly, there are hints of the final cosmic end of the world with falling stars and the dimming of the sun and the moon. Finally, in both of these endings, we see the elements of the end of our own earthly world in the event we call death. The words of Jesus in today's gospel concerning the destruction of the temple is within the context of the bystanders who were marveling at the magnificence of the temple. Beautifully and rarely adorned with noble stones, the temple boasted sacrifices from everywhere and of all kinds, from returning Jews and those who dwell in Jerusalem. It could be very disheartening to listen to the response of Jesus concerning this beautiful masterpiece and to contemplate its destruction. No wonder the Sadducees raised it as one of the charges against Jesus at his trial. To predict the destruction of the temple is also a prediction of a war so fierce that the Jews will not be able to defend the temple. It also implies that the Roman soldiers who stood sentry there will be unable to offer the help needed to save the temple from destruction. Jesus told them, As for these things which you see, the days will come when there shall not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. That made the disciples anxious about when this was to take place. But Jesus warned that they do not listen to those who might try to play on them by claiming to know when the time will be. He further predicted there will be wars and earthquakes and pestilence as signs of the end time. He spoke of the coming trial and tribulation, the persecution and the martyrdom that will characterize the early church. This, he says, will be a time for you to be a testimony. He assured the disciples of the divine help that will come to those who bear witness to his name. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. The persecution will not come from external forces only, but also from one's own home and family. But the Lord promised again, by your endurance, you will gain your lives. Persecutions come in different ways and under different forms today. Faith is needed to overcome. Trust in the Lord's promise to remain with his church. That is the way to live through life, knowing that everything else will pass away. 
the time will come when all the worldly sins we struggle to amass will not mean a sin to us, either by death or their destruction. Faith in God is what will count at such a time. As you go about your activities this week, think about the end of time, think about death, think of the last things and where you will be when the end comes. May your endurance win you your life. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.